G'day guys, Mac with the Outer Circle, and today we've got the second Age of Sigma overview. This time out we're going to be looking at the Grand Alliance Chaos, as I stated in the video that you would have seen by now. As with the last time out, what we're looking at here is the size of the range, the range variety, if the miniatures sync up with one another. Um, I'm trying not to look at factions where it's entirely old miniatures because I feel that they represent a different game to what the rest of Age of Sigmar is. They lack the dynamism, they don't have the crazy over-the-top characters, not everyone is standing on a tactical rock. It's just a completely different beast. So with that in mind, today, about as far back as we're going, is these guys. And that's Beasts of Chaos. So with Beasts of Chaos, it's an interesting one. Basically, the range is an old range, but it's been supplemented by some new stuff. Uh, Zangors, for example, have been thrown in there. You've also got, um, well, you've got the Endless Spells. Yes, you've got the terrain item up here, the Herdstone. I like the Herdstone. I love the Endless Spells they've got. In fact, I know it's a bit small, but I'm going to use the uh, the burning bull out of this to represent my Kadai Fireborn in my uh, Chaos Dwarf range. Yes, I'm doing that. That's a thing. Centigors are old. Old as hell. Um, on release back in about 2001-ish, maybe 2002 off the top of my head, was when a lot of this range came. Um, the Razor Gore, I've never liked the model. I don't think it adds anything to the range, so I don't care for it. The Cockatrice, I've never even seen anyone use one. The characters are all pretty old school as well. The Ungors and Gors, um, they used to come in a single box together um, back in the day. Of course, now they're being sort of split off into their own boxes. Um, Tuscor Chariot, it's not terribly old, I guess, compared to the rest of the range, but... You really see the difference when you compare the Zangors with, say, the Bestigors. The Bestigors are stuck in that late 90s, early 2000s monopose. I believe they were all white metal at the time. I think they're fine cast now. Um, but they're in that rank and file monopose. So the arms are quite tucked in. Um, the weapons are held at sort of a 45 degree angle so they don't interfere with the rank behind, etc. Um, these Dragon Ogres are a definite improvement over the old ones, but as a kit to build, sucks balls, and the models are not particularly great. I mean, if you compare these Dragon Ogres to, uh, say, what Forge World did with the, uh, with the Chaos Dwarves, if I quickly jump over to there, and um, you look at the Bull Centaur renders, for instance, like, holy crap, now that's a Dragon Ogre-sized cavalry unit, and these look great. Whereas the Dragon Ogres that... I think it's just the arms. The arms and the weapons. They've got this really pathetic posing going on. Where they're doing like the Roboto... No, I've got a Mr. Roboto type dance happening there. With two identical weapons. When it feels like they need to do something more with it. Maybe great weapons like the Shagoth. I think the Shagoth is one of those models that... Even though it is literally 20 years old. Really, really holds up. Um... The Minotaurs and the Doom Bull, they both hold up pretty well, but again, they're 8th edition miniatures. They should hold up pretty well. Um, the Jabba Slith, again, I don't know that I've ever seen anyone actually bloody use one. Maybe if I went and searched for battle reports, I'd eventually find it, but eh. Uh, Sligor and Gorgon, I like them both um, to varying degrees. I think the thing I don't like about the Gorgon is the six arms. The rest of the... Basically, everyone except for the Dragon Ogres is four arms. And it makes sense, you know, they're Minotaurs. They're a play on man and beast being combined together. Well, why would it have six limbs? It's... I don't know. Other than that, yeah, it's an eclectic mix of miniatures with stuff from 2000, stuff from 2018, stuff from 2011, all just smashed into a single army list, and it really shows. So... I think it lacks direction and it really, instead of getting like this pathetic battle tome beast of chaos that they got with a terrain piece and some endless spells, they need a proper faction overhaul. Um, 
the gores and the ungores look like they look really nice at a distance but once you get up close to them you can see how lacking they are because it is that early 2000s technology like the best of 2001 does not compete with the best of 2021 sculpt wise so i think they need to look at doing something with this faction in particular like what they did with the slaves to darkness speaking of which probably a logical next point to go to is the slaves to darkness because what you have here is this very interesting scenario where they've done what I think everyone wishes they did with 40k Space Marines, which was they've just reimagined what's already there subtly instead of going for something completely new and different. So when you look at the uh, Slaves to Darkness Start Collecting box, and you see in it, it's got Warriors of Chaos and Chaos Knights that these guys look like they belong in a squad with these Chaos Warriors here. The only difference is these guys have arms held out to the sides, these guys don't. Now while I may criticize um, heaps of dynamic models on the one hand in some ranges, in this range it works because the miniatures are in the exact same armor with the exact same sorts of weapons and helmets and okay some of them have like dragon scales and human flesh on their cloaks and they've got different shields that's fine they look more like chosen or something than chaos warriors but it they fit you can mingle them into one squad people won't really complain about it they won't care it's fine it looks good what they've done with these models same with the chaos knights these are very dynamic chaos knights provided in this star collecting box um, whereas when we go back a step and we compare them with the existing Chaos Knights, they're much less dynamic, again, because they're trying to rank up on 25 mil wide uh, by 50 mil long bases, square bases, which they're not limited by anymore. So, okay, kind of a big deal. Um, in the good way, though, these Chaos Knights fit together just nice. They look right as a unit working alongside one another, which is something a lot of other races really lack so slaves to darkness is the perfect reimagining um, i love varangard i just think 170 dollars is more than double what they deserve to be sold for which is probably why almost no one uses them speaking of which i should really talk about the range as a whole um i like the characters i like them a lot i i'm this chaos sorcerer here with the two horns in his head on the right hand side is a definite step down from some of the chaos sorcerers i have the date from that 7th edition Warhammer Fantasy, 6th edition Warhammer Fantasy period. There was this really awesome uh, sorcerer who was kind of like slithering along the ground in these robes. And there's also a really good version of him on a horse, which I also have in white metal. That was a fucking chaos sorcerer. This guy... I don't know, looks like... Almost like he's out of Dark City. Um, and not in a good way. Never, ever done anything for me in that particular model. Uh, same with this Chaos Sorcerer on foot. I think part of his miniature for conversion bits works really well. Uh, but this the Chaos Lord uh, should be should be doing something. Should be leading by example. They're not the I stand on the tactical rock type. Uh, look at these old exalted heroes. Uh, the old uh, Vardic Krom model. Uh, the old Wolfric the Wanderer model. These guys have personality. Why do they have personality? Because they date from that 6th and 7th edition Warhammer Fantasy period where the changeover occurred. Where there was passion, real drive and passion put into these projects. And each of these guys had comprehensive backstories or was really used as a display piece in armies. There was a lot of conversions done using them. Like uh, the Exalted Hero of Chaos in the center. I remember a really cool conversion I think it was Paul Sawyer did with him. He's riding in a metal uh, Chaos Chariot because, hey, that's the chariot they sold at the time. Um, and he put the whip hand off the old crewman into the guy's left hand. So he cut the hand off, put a new hand in his place. Works perfectly. He's already got the arm out outstretched. So it looks like he was whipping on the horse. All he had to do was cut off his tactical rock. See, even old models had them occasionally. You only had to cut that little bit of rock off and it perched his foot perfectly on the chariot. It was a great fit. Those sort of conversions were really, really easy to do. Now though, a little bit harder. And that plastic Chaos Lord, the $25 guy up in the top left, looks like shit to me. 
I still think Krom is probably the nicest of the three on foot. Um, I've never been a huge fan of Wolfric the Wanderer, but I do acknowledge he's got a lot of character. Um, the God's Sworn Hunt. Again, it's it's a different feel entirely, what that is. That is a Conan the Barbarian adventuring gang um, from the Hyborian Age next to Vikings. Like full-on Vikings in plate armor. It's two clashing types of forces. Uh, I hate the Gore Beast Chariot, the, the giant fat chariot in general for Chaos. I, I always like the old school chariots. Um, spiky, yes. The big horns coming out from under it and the giant metal prow. A chariot should be lightly built, but the spikes and such should uh, suggest the lethality of the chariot. And these new ones don't do that for me. I hate both the Chaos Chariots. Um, that shitty old rickety metal one, I've still got from back in the day. Um, it's sitting in an acetone bath as we speak, uh, dissolving its paint away because I'm trying to do something with it because I have a heap of 6th edition Chaos stuff. And yeah. The Chaos Spawn, uh, again, very aged models at this point. Um, I believe 5th edition was when they were new, so... 5th edition 40k, that is, so probably around 2007-2008 period. Uh, the Demon Prince model is fine. Uh, Bellacore is a much nicer model though. Uh, looks wise, just a shame that, you know, fine cast and whatever. I have a white metal one, again, next to me, um, which needs a lot of work done to bring it up to a presentable standard. The Gaunt Summoners work because they're Zinch. They're allowed to be completely different to the rest of the race, so that's fine. The Endless Spells are fantastic. They look really good while it's a character. Um, I even think that the Endless Spell, which is like the the burning uh, Chaos Star on the lower right-hand side of the three, that one there would look really, really nice um, as like a demon marker for Demons of the Ruin Storm or something at 30k. And then, of course, going down, the Foramid Crusher is a horrible miniature. Um... I couldn't narrow it down. I guess it's very top heavy, stumpy legs, no discernible neck. Whereas the Ogrid Myrmidon to the right is a fantastic looking model to me personally. Um, again, it's got it's got some detail, it's got some stuff happening, it's got better proportions. The legs don't look anywhere near as stumpy despite looking sort of a similar length because they're that bestial look. Um, why isn't that in the... Uh, why isn't that, seriously, in, uh, with the Beasts of Chaos? Like, how is this uh, Ogre and Myrmidon a Slaves to Darkness but not a Beast of Chaos model? Very strange. Uh, the Chaos Chosen Command, I hate the Chaos Chosen. Um, not to mention, they did gut from the range. There was that really cool Possessed unit they had for Fantasy. I don't know whatever happened to that. I think it was very expensive and no one bought them, but... That unit disappeared, and that was a nice-looking unit. This Chaos Chosen Command uh, and the Chaos Chosen in general do nothing for me. They are just gold trim and spikes and horns for the sake of it with outlandishly oversized weapons, and it's gone past the rule of cool and grimdark into the realm of grim derp. Uh, opinions may vary, but I think, honestly, the regular Chaos Warriors put some of these halberds or great weapons on them and give them a better paint job, maybe some head swaps, they look better as chosen. They just do. Um, the chaotic beasts look fine, although they're very repetitive on the left. The lords on Manticore are fine. Um, Manticore was never a unit I was in love with. Um, I, I know it does have its fans, though. Um, I think, for some reason, it was always the Winged Terror or whatever it was. Not Winged Nightmares. I think it was Winged Terror. Um, the Vampire Counts unit that had the Blood Dragon Vampire. I was always a huge fan of that model. Um, Spire Tyrants, these guys at least kind of do fit in with the theme, but yeah, still they're their own thing. I think all these Cabals and Warcry stuff doesn't belong in a Slaves to Darkness army unless that army is exclusively that. I know a person here. Uh, in my hometown who has an army and they've got like one of each of these units in the army and they are look so eclectic on the battlefield It doesn't work um, How should I describe this problem? Chaos is an amalgam. We all know it. Zinch, Nurgle, Slanesh, Corn, all blended together with Chaos Undecided 
and it works because there's a lot of carryover you know chaos warriors are the same warriors whether they're in blue armor whether they're in green armor so when they're all in the battlefield together it doesn't matter that they're supporting different factions those factions have their own different demons it works because they're recognizably that particular faction the, the color palette and the continuity is very strong whereas when you have say the uh, Corvus Cabal uh, the Untamed Beasts the Iron Golems and the Splintered Fang all on the table together it looks like completely distinct warbands instead of your army having a homogenous theme carried throughout where everything feels like it's part of a greater whole it feels like four distinct warbands and then when you have them next to the Chaos Warriors, that only increases the problem further. And then if you add Beasts of Chaos and Chaos Demons in there, well, it just becomes a clusterfuck visually, and nothing looks like it belongs together. Now, call this a pet peeve of mine, if you like, but to me, the, an army needs to have a consistent theme throughout. There are many ways of doing this. Same paint scheme is obviously one of them. Uh, the same basing scheme is another. And basing and paint schemes can carry you a long way. But I think these models are so divergent from one another in pose, in war gear, in silhouette, that it's almost impossible to make them look like they belong to a homogenous whole. But, again, personal preference. Um, the Mutalith and the Slaughter Brute both look terrible. So let's not even go down that route. Uh, I remember someone made a comic of the Mutalith... Uh, Vortex Beast making out with one of those Tyranid like Husperex or whatever and it was truly horrifying yeah Soul Grinders I think are cool um, but they're a very 40k looking model they don't fit into Age of Sigma they're just too mechanical um, it's not much different to a Morphine Forge Fiend or a um, what's the flyer again oh, I forget the Hell Turkey the Hell Drake none of like it's it's just as mechanical as they are pretty much or even just a regular defiler if you're going to go as far as putting a soul grinder into age of sigma you may as well put those things in too it's just simply way too mechanical okay on the ever chosen uh, i don't like his what his horse has become this weird three-headed amalgam as an extension of his fluff. As a character in Age of Sigma, pretending it's not Archaeon, he doesn't have that established fluff and history and background from old Warhammer Fantasy, it works. It's just fine. Uh, the Lord and Demonic Mount, again, the very old miniature now and showing its age, very static. The Chaos Marauders, same problem as the uh, Beastmen. These are models from 2001-ish, so maybe 2002. They, they really show their age. Uh, the Marauder Horsemen are a bit newer. These are a lot newer, in fact. They work. The Chosen, as I said earlier, don't. And the Chaos War Shrine is a weird one because I have I converted one up for my Maggot King because I don't like this miniature at all. There are things I do like about it. The dais isn't too bad. The, uh, the actual icon on top with like the burning incense and the fire normally i hate those sculpt on effects but i think it works here what lets it down is one the sorcerer guy writing it doesn't suit it you need someone who's much more clean skin than that no helmet at all no sword think uh maybe a headdress think like an aztec priest performing one of those uh open heart surgeries <laughs> okay Something like that would work better, and it doesn't need the spiky barricades off it, uh, and the giant beast heads on there. Get rid of that stuff, make it look much more like a planequin, uh, as in an old school wooden big shield being held up by the ogres, and it would look so much nicer, because it's just got a bit of visual overload here, with just spike after spike after spike, that doesn't add anything to the model, other than a lot of hard edges to highlight. It, yeah. I mean, it's just too busy. It's too busy. But if, if you took away all of those things, you, you simplified it right down. So it's just a simple dais, of, like I think a very large shield, okay? With that central icon with the burning incense and the little like six-limbed six figure holding up the Chaos Star with the axe buried in the altar, you put that in the center of a simple icon, it would look so much better than what this is. 
So that rounds out Slaves to Darkness. Next we'll go to the Blades of Corn. The Blades of Corn obviously pretty much the first thing they ever released for Age of Sigmar, and some stuff has disappeared over time, like um, the Korgoroth and that, because they were all in that uh, starter set, and then they discontinued that starter set, and they didn't keep those models in production. So Skulltaker looks great. I was a big fan of the old model, new one looks great. The Herald of Corn looks great as well. Um, I don't know if I like that one or the uh, Forge World one more. I think I'm going to lean towards Games Workshop in this instance, although the Corn Demon Prince from Forge World is fucking awesome. Um, the Judgments of Corn, they look cool, especially the bleeding skulls floating in the air, that's, that's really neat. Uh, I think the one that doesn't work is the Flaming Axe flying out of the ground. Uh, probably if it got rid of the flame, it was just an axe dripping gore in the air, probably worked better. Karanak, cool model. Uh, Skull Altar does zero for me. Um, again, they, they don't do their murdering at the temple, they do their murdering in the field. And it's the purest expression of corn. The Bloodthirster has never been a favourite of mine in plastic. However, the Scarabrand Bloodthirster, if you are able to put the regular Bloodthirster wings onto it, is a beautiful combination of models. I think what lets this particular Bloodthirst down is the fact that it's stuck in this one leg in the air leaping pose no matter what. It's always got one leg up in the air and it adds a sense of, it's, it's more dynamic, yes, okay, but when all the Bloodthirsters and people have a couple in their army all share that same pose, the same leap off happening into the air, it's, it's a bit, it's a bit crappy. I, yeah. I still really like um, the Cabanda model, the Bloodthirster over at Forge World, who can't even keep the name Cabanda. Like, seriously? That was copyrighted by someone else? No way. That model's beautiful. Um, Skarik the Bloodborne is beautiful. The Mazarl Butcher Demon Prince of Corn is much less beautiful. And the Vorgoroth the Scarred and Skellic is just. Who is using this model? I would like to know who actually went out and bought this with this weird, like, bloody skull mutated throne coming out the back of the four fucking dragon. Just no, it doesn't look right. Um, the dragon itself is kind of fine, but then you get to this really munted left hand, you got this beautiful core on the right hand, and then this completely munted arm slash shield on the left. Chaos dragons need two heads, that's what makes them cool and scary and different. And this whole theme of just skulls and bones embedded into the flesh of everything corn now, that's an Age of Sigmar thing, uh, that is a trend that's just gotta go because it's fucking horrid. And they've done it to a lot of units. Um, Games Workshop started with the Korgoroth model and uh, yeah, it's just carried on. Jeez. Um, the Garrick's Reavers look fine. They suit the rest of the range. The Wrathmongers do not look fine. Uh, probably down to that weird pseudo Corn Berserker head. Um, a different head on them, maybe emulating more of a Blood Letter would look better. Um, but yeah, the, the heads being so tall and wide and they don't have any shoulder pads to help uh, equal out that mass up high on their head, it gives them a real poor sense of balance as a miniature and I don't think that looks as good. Um, the Slaughter Priests all look fine, Mighty Skull Crushers are great, the old school Exalted Deathbringer with Blood Bite Axe on the left there, he looks great and again so, so very different, compare him to all the other Chaos characters around him. And again, you get this eclectic mix of really old school corn, where he's like a Viking warrior and he's just got that corn iconography, but he's otherwise very much a regular Chaos Warrior to these other guys who are all uh, the cast of Pumping Iron uh, meets the cast of Mad Max or something. And Valkyrie the Bloody never did anything for me. The, the background lore, the, the model, none of it. Um, but I know she's got her fans, so it's fine. Uh, I just think there's some much cooler female characters in Warhammer Fantasy, and it would have been more interesting to have 
a female Nurgle worshipper, uh, such as that new Nurgle sorceress, or uh, Slaanesh especially, and Zinch. I think all of those factions suit women better than Corn does. Uh, yeah, it's just, it is what it is. Um, Scar Bloodwrath, at least he has some sort of shoulder armor, and again, it gives him a much better balance when you look at him and you compare him to the Wrathmongers. He works better. Still not all the way there, but it works better. Um, as you can see, of course, basically every one of these Slaughter Priests, um, Blood Wrath, they've all got a tactical rock. The only one who doesn't is the Aspiring Deathbringer with Gorax and Skullhammer. Uh, the Skullmaster, Herald of Corn on Juggernaut is meh. It looks pretty much identical to any other blood letter on a Juggernaut. It doesn't stand out enough. It needs something different with it. Um, maybe the Juggernaut should be bigger. Maybe more spikes coming off it. Rearing up in the air. Something. Maybe he should be armed with an axe instead of the sword. You know, the classic corn axe. Make the Herald really look different to the other blood letters. Because again, in this case, he looks just like any other blood crusher. Uh, the bloodletters themselves on the left look fine. I still prefer the 4th edition ones where they're a lot more bestial. Um, Solo Angrim is a atrocious model, and let's never speak of it again. Lord of Corn on Juggernaut. Old school model, still one of the best. And he stands out for the same reasons that the Skullmaster above doesn't. He has a completely different pose in, in his Juggernaut. It's a very crouched down, low, like a snarling... Uh, like a, a cat sneaking up on a mouse ready to pounce. It's got those spikes separating the upper, uh, it's, it's back, it's dorsal spinal area between the shoulder blades. You can see it's got three skulls impaled on spikes. The rider himself has the ax held down low. He's almost surveying the battlefield. That looks so good. Flesh hounds look great. Um, the skull reapers, again, being that shared box with the wrathmongers, they lack, they're almost like power armored space marines, but it's, they got power armored pants and they didn't get past that point. So they're very bottom heavy. And then they've got these big totems and such hanging above them, which makes them very top heavy at the same time. So they've almost got an hourglass shaped figure, but where they're thinnest is those shoulders where they should be, you know, the classic V taper. Big imposing strong models have a strong V taper. These guys don't, therefore they don't look anywhere near as imposing as I think they should being combat monsters. Blood Reavers look great, Blood Warriors look great. Um, blood Crushers are fine, Scarbrand by far the best of the Plastic Bloodthirsters. The old Aspiring Deathbringer on the left, oh what an old school miniature. Again going back to 6th edition Warhammer Fantasy, fantastic model, has stood the test of time. But again, same problem as the others, doesn't fit the range. And the Demons of Corn, Blood Throne, and Skull Cannon are fucking horrid looking miniatures. They do not feel like corn at all to me. They're trying to go with like this Giga esque biomechanical feel. I do not like it. Does zero for me. Let's pretend they don't exist. I think there are so many other ways they could have pulled off this concept where it would have looked really cool instead of just skulls embedded in a testicle sack of flesh. Just no, let's pretend it never happened. All right, moving on from there, the Disciples of Zinch. Um, this is one of those rare ranges where I think they've pretty much got everything right. I'm not a huge fan of the Cursling, but it's fine. Um, I remember when the Plastic Flamers and um, Screamers all came out, they're, they're fine, they were good. Um, they're probably the nicest ones we've got yet, the Horrors are good. They're not the, again, 6th edition fantasy slash 3.5 chaos, that Diaz era of sculpting of demons. I know he didn't sculpt those ones, he did the uh, demonettes, which I have plenty of laying around, don't you worry. They looked better, because uh, they really were these grotesque creatures, like amorphous, crawling out of one another. It looked so cool. Um, these guys are not that. But they're not terrible either. They're just not, they're not hitting that high, okay? They're not getting the 100 in the test century in cricket. They're, they're getting the, uh, they're getting like a 90. It's still good. Um, the Herald is uninspiring on the left. The Tower Mage looks beautiful. The Blue Scribes are awesome. Very, very thematic model. And 
again, if they release this now, the Blue Scribes would not be a simple um, flattened out disc screamer with his little eyes on the underside and his funny mouths with the scribes writing on the back. This model would probably be huge. It would probably be on a 100mm base if it was re released now. There'd probably be 500 tentacles and fire coming off the, the screamer. Um, the scribes themselves, who the fuck knows what they would be. They'd probably be really bizarre looking. They Something that busy yet that tame, I don't think they could do it anymore at Games Workshop. Blue scribes are perfect. So zinch. Uh, the Fate Master on the left. Again, old school chaos model, white metal back in the day. Beautiful model, love it. Um, still one of my favorite versions of the disc. And when it first popped out, um, and it had that disc with those sharp blades with that little pink blend they did on them, uh, probably with magenta ink. Anyone remembers that ink in that time period? I've still got some too. Uh, that just blew my mind that people would, would do something like that because it was not something you commonly saw done 20 years ago. People doing... Uh, metallics that were not coppers bronzes and silvers and golds for people to go and do something like a metallic pink as a highlight to make a silver blade pop was unheard of especially for games workshop of all people to do um zangors look great herald on chariot the burning chariots themselves all looks great the lord of change is by far the best of the plastic graded demons. The Slanesh one is really nice too, but I, the Water Change has so much character, so much really subtle detail. All the little uh, gems and charms in the feathers, the little ribbing and the, the sculpting that's being done on the torso. All the little muscular striations um, going across the chest there and up the neck is so nice um just to jump over to slinny who we're going to look at next anyway um you don't have that kind of detail on the keeper of secrets it's very amorphous it's very smooth uh look how smooth and pristine the chest and and the shoulders and the biceps all are they're very smooth panels there there's not deep furrows between the muscles even the six pack on the abdomen is really subdued whereas like this bird's been juicing. He's got some muscle going on here. Um, or at least a very low body fat count. Um, yeah, love it. And sure, it does have little things that I'm not a fan of generally, like sculpted on flame and such, coming off the miniature in areas, like off the, sh off the stuff. But it's so minimal in relation to the size of the miniature. It works. It's not distracting like it would be on many other miniatures. So this is probably for me my personal extent of busyness. Anything more than this is getting too busy. So if people are wondering what my threshold is, you're looking at it. It's the Lord of Change. Um, and then at the very bottom that we've got the Screamers, which I love. I've loved every version of the Screamers. I think they all look great. And the Changeling. And the Changeling is... It's one of the more mediocre models in the Zinch range, but still a nice model. So overall, probably one of the best ranges where pretty much everything in it I can say I really, really like, uh, which is rare. Uh, speaking of Slanesh, of course, let's go into that. So it works. It really works. Um, there are things that could do better. The endless spells. I like the lashing whips. I don't like the fact they're coming out of a giant demonette's face. That part does not do anything for me, but I think just the whips themselves, if they were coiling across the ground, would be terrifying. There's no fighting a set of whips coiling towards you, whereas the face, that's almost like a target. Like, you see that face coming for, for you? Maybe maybe you can shoot it in the head. You know, Maybe it'll die. Like, what are you going to do if whips attack you? You can't kill that. Even if it, it can't die from being shot in the head, it doesn't matter. It's, it's less terrifying than if it's just uh, mindless whips coiling up out of the earth and um, tearing at your flesh, that's ugh, terrifying. Uh, the Contorted Epitome, that is an interesting miniature. Um, the Mirror is... The more I look at it, the less I like it. And I do have one um, unassembled. The masks and all the extra shit on the heads of these demonettes did not need to be there. The sort of Harlequin, Jester, Tudor-era neck piece on the one on the right. Doesn't need to be there. 
it's just extra crap. I don't know why it's got its own like slaneshi robotic tentacles holding it up. Didn't need it. It just needed to be a mysterious mirror hovering in the air is more terrifying. And it didn't need the horns either. Why has the mirror got horns? It's a mirror. It was fine just as that. Um, so not my favorite. I much, much prefer the Endless Spells um, mirror, this, this bad boy here. This to me is much cooler looking as a miniature than the contorted epitome or epitome, however you want to pronounce it. It didn't need the hand holding it, that's true, but you might be able to build it without the hand. If it's just this mirror floating in the air with maybe a demon at each side of it, yeah, that'd be cooler. But, you know, personal, personal taste. Uh, the new mask is fine. I'm not super thrilled about it, but I don't hate it either. It's fine. Uh, the Fane of Slaanesh. Uh, it didn't need the head coming out the middle of it. It looks like uh, like the in an episode of like Scooby-Doo or something, or like an old cartoon. Looney Tunes. It's like the Looney Tunes symbol. Yeah, that's what it is. It's just this head appears. You know, yibbity, yibbity, that's all, folks. Demonettes look fine. They're not Diaz Demonettes, though, which sucks. Uh, the Hellstriders look nice. Herald's nice. The Seekers, again, they're not the Diaz Seekers. They were shit hot. Fiends are beautiful. These are definitely the best fiends they've ever done. Now, the Chariots. I hate their Chariots. The spiked wheels, as a concept, are fine. The fact... Like, these chariots here, where it's like the dialed back ones, are okay. I don't mind the dialed back chariot, like this. Once you start getting into the the crazy uh, herald chariots, uh, like, in this star collecting box, they've, they've got one. Let's see. This is just so big and over the top and bloated, I mean... So many spikes, so much stuff going on with it. It's not a better model than that really subdued chariot we just looked at. So, yeah, not not a fan at all. Much, much nicer chariot, just with less shit on it. Just less visually... Ugh, what am I looking at? Uh, and the Keeper of Secrets is another nice greater demon. Um... There's so little variance, though, between the Shalaxi Hexbane Greater Demon and the regular one. They're so similar. Um, and I can even compare that to, say, Kairos Fate Weaver. Uh, at least Kairos, his two heads are in completely different spots to the stock head. He's got um, his arms, sorry, uh, going to completely different directions, holding the arm out to cast in the air. Uh, even the staff arm is held much more out to the side. Those little changes do a lot. The problem with Slanish here is both the arms on both the models, or in fact, both pairs of arms on both models are pretty much in the exact same spots. The cord arms at the rear are definitely the exact same arms. And of course, some of the weapons that are on the Demonette um, are used on multiple versions of the Demonette, not just on Hexbane. So... Yeah, too, too similar a silhouette for me personally. But, you know, tastes differ. Then we get to the Maggotkin. Uh, actually, before I touch on that, the water change at Forge World, I like. I like the plastic one far more, however. Same with the Keeper of Secrets. I think the Keeper of Secrets at Forge World has this really big torso and very tiny looking little legs compared to that torso. Just something is off about it. I've never liked the model too much. I liked it more than the old uh, Keeper of Secrets, I think, but um, but yeah, that's it. One model for both Zinch and Slanish over at Forge World, uh, unlike Nurgle. So the great unclean one with the sword in the sort of top center here, love it. It's the best of the new great unclean ones by a mile. Probably because it has that old school, um, it's harking back to the um, original Slaves to Darkness front cover. 
So cool, works. Uh, Rodigus doesn't work for me, mostly because of this left arm, this left hand where he's got like, he's got another greater demon head coming out of his arm or something and these stupid tentacles on the back of it which don't even have suckers like they they sculpted tentacles but the tentacles are just covered in pimples or something yeah that arm just ruins what's otherwise a nice model like the the tree staff that he's holding in his right hand looks nice um i don't mind the head either on the rodigus but these tentacles coming out the neck out that right arm all up the side of his belly looks shit um, sloppity bulb hyper is shit the concept is shit it's just shit 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 I don't care I'll say it as many times as I like it's dumb uh, the Lord of Afflictions and the Puscoil White Lords look great as do the Plague Drones they're actually quite different models having both in my uh, Maggot Ken army there's quite a size difference between the two actually uh, if I had to pick on the tabletop, I'd probably pick the Puscoils as the better performers. Uh, I love the Putrid Black Kings, although they do benefit from a better picture. Um, this one here, where they're in just this mishmash of different colours, does not it does not uh, show the strengths of the squad. Um, this picture of the, the box art, much nicer. Much nicer. Uh, what else? Feculent Nullmore has grown on me over time when I built the one for my army. I hate the the, the uh, what are they? The sea anemones growing off the base, which is like a big thing they carried on with like the beasts of Nurgle. They look shit. But the tree itself, especially if you don't add all those bells on, looks much, much nicer. Um Spoilpox Scrivener, another terrible model. This is where it's trying to be cartoonishly happy Nurgle. Uh, it's just going way too far in that direction. Whereas all these other characters work. Uh, Festus even was, was starting to push that that limit of cartoonish. But I think he gets away with it. But compared to Spoil, Pox, Scrivener and uh, the Bowl Piper, he's got nothing on those shit shows. But the Pox Bringer, Lord of Plagues, Gut Rot Spume, Lord of Blights, they're all in my Maggot Kin army and I love all those models. Especially Gut Rot Spume. The tentacles on him work. Because he's like a pirate lord and he's got barnacles growing on him and stuff like that. There's an actual theme there where he has this kraken uh, coming out the side of him. It's not just tentacles for the sake of tentacles. Uh, I also have this Rockbringer Sorcerer. I've got the Glotkin. The Glotkin I didn't like at first but it has really grown on me over time. I hate the complete asymmetry of it. But the body of it is really nice. Uh, what does let these miniatures down is, especially on the back of Spearman on his arm, you'll see there's skulls embedded into the arm. Again, it's that, I don't know why they started this trend, um, but again, they, they did it really heavily with corn. is just skulls embedded. Why are there skulls embedded in it? It, it looks horrible. Um, and one thing I don't like is it's got these weird horny they're not even horns. There's something happening right where his spine is, but they look like big horns or nails or fingernails or something. Um, big, I don't know, apricot seeds, olive pits, something like that. They're not flesh, but they're not horn either, and it's all crap. Um, but I like all the eyeballs and stuff. I paint them as like these glossy black buos because it's just. Ugh. Um. Yeah, the skulls embedded in the flesh is terrible. But you give this like a really gnarly looking scheme, which takes away the cartoonishness, and it's actually quite a nice model. Um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, the, the three Lords of Nurgle. Uh, Orgard's Demon Spew, Mortebex Twice Born, and Blue Bright Spawned. I'm not a huge fan of any of them. I don't mind the creature they're riding, but the actual miniatures themselves on top do not work for me. Probably the only one who's any good is Blowbrot Spawned, because Mortebex is atrocious with his Nurgling head, and Orgut's Demon Spew, the way he holds his weapons, and his legs seem so far back, it looks like he's going to tumble forward off at any moment. It looks horrible. Orticulix Slimax, I do not like as a model, uh, as it is, but 
uh, what I did with it was I converted it to use as a Chaos War Shrine. So that I took away all the cartoonish cuteness of the snail um, with like the little fucking um, nurgling hanging off the front on the fishing pole, the carrot and the, uh, the, carrot and the stick going on. Got rid of that and I, I built up this rickety platform on its back of like rotting wood that used the uh, Goblin Town from the Hobbit game. And then I have um, the Horticular Slimax is sitting up on that and I turned it into a Nurgle War Shrine. And that thing looks, that thing actually looks legit. It looks really good. Um, Epidemius, I like it. Definitely needs an update though, because it's quite getting on in years. The Beast of Nurgle now, he's actually a downgrade from the old Beast of Nurgle. Like, what the fuck is with that head? Uh, the Harbinger of Decay is a beautiful older model. Love it. Absolutely love it. Over at Forge World, there's actually quite a lot of love for Nurgle. Um, the Plague Toads are the nicest Beasts of Nurgle that aren't Beasts of Nurgle, so I suggest using them if it wasn't for the price. But, hey, um, $77 for a Beast of Nurgle is not that cheap 120 for three demon plague toads which are the same size go the plague toads They're so much nicer um Nurgle demon prince is fine but he doesn't suit age of sigma neither does his herald just too robotic too gun happy too mechanical still my favorite great unclean one and i have one um in fact i think that was my first forge world model yeah i think it was uh, the Demon Pox Riders of Nurgle, again, they're really cool and they work. I like the fact that they've got the old school uh, rusty blades in their hands. And it's not that weird uh, new Nurgle thing where all the blades, all the weapons they carry is like sharpened bits of, I don't know, obsidian or something. Um, if you look at the new Plague Bearers and their weapons... I don't like these weapons very much. I'm not, I'm not sure what they're meant to be or what they're carved from or whatever. Like a jade or flint weapon would probably work really well for a corn demon. Not so much for a Nurgle demon. So yeah, you can see it's this really jagged, like like chipped, napped flint or obsidian. You know, like an Aztec culture would have. Doesn't work compared to the rusty meat cleaver. Yeah, now that's a weapon. That's a weapon you can get behind. Uh, they don't have the Plague Ogres on here anymore, but they were, they were not bad models. And they don't have the, the Bile Trolls on here either, which I really like. And I've got three... Uh, from now I know they're out of production, they might be worth a bit more. Um, I've got three in my um, Maggot Kin army. So, really nice stuff. And uh, to round everything out, we have the, the Scaven. People hate it when you call them Scaven. So, here we have the Scaven. Um, I think as a range they do pretty well. I don't mind the Doom Wheels, the Plague Furnace. It's a bit campy and over the top, but it's nothing crazier than what the Skaven already were or had. The Vermin Lords are fine. I, I'm a little bit hit and miss on the fact that there's five that all use the same base model, but I think they're different enough that it works. As a range, I think I'm pretty happy with Skaven in general. Yeah, just like Zinch, I think it works. There's definitely some stuff that has not held up as well over time, like you know, the Plague Sensor Bearers and that, these old school white metal ones compared to the uh, Plastic Plague Monks. It's a tough one. Um, the Angler Spells are nice. Actually, really nice Angler Spells. I might have to get me one of those. They'll make some really cool uh, objectives for tables for 30k. Um... The Gnaw Holes. Again, I think the Gnaw Holes look really good as like summoning pits for Demons of the Ruin Storm. Uh, get rid of the Skaven rickety frameworks on top and just have the swirling pool of warp fire. And that looks like it could be a portal to, you know, hell, as it were. It works just fine. Uh, Giselles are something I've always loved. Screaming Bells, classic. The Storm Fiends are probably my most hated models in the range. Yeah, by far. Everything else I really like. Uh, I suppose Thanquil and Bone Ripper. There you go. 
Thankwall and Bone Ripper is not a model I like. So him and the Storm Fiends. But everything else, I'm, yeah, I'm really positive on as a range. So yeah, I think I think Skaven works really well as a range because so much of it is from a similar time period, barely around 10 years sort of separate the oldest and the newest models in the range. I know some like the Warp Fire Thrower and the uh, Gisales, they all came out for 6th edition Warhammer Fantasy, so you'll hear like 90, mate 99 sort of era, and the stuff that came out for the end times obviously came out around the 2013-2014 era, so say 15 years from oldest and newest sort of models. Uh, whereas again, you go to like Beastman and you compare it, you have models here that are over 20 years old in this range. There are models in here, like some of their characters, that are from the 90s. Uh, they're very much like the Eldar in 40k. They've got a lot of models that they got pretty damn right with the last set of sculpts, and so they've just hung on to those sculpts because the models were so nice. Uh, they did a good enough job on them and they've stood the test of time, but now they're showing their age. Things like the hands on the weapons, the hands are looking a bit too big in proportion to the size of the wrist and the arm. The weapons are looking very chunky on some of the models, like Centigors are a great example. Uh, the spear shafts are thicker than their legs, they've got these giant cord hands, the tiny little thin wrists behind them. They're, they're very monoposed, there is nothing you can do with these. These are, you are building them exactly as you see them here. You know, that stuff has not aged well. So... Definitely, I'd like to see some resources devoted to the poor Beastman range, updating that. Uh, Corn doesn't need to be touched for a long time. Zinch is perfect. Slanesh is pretty damn good, especially with the new Head of Night stuff that's coming. That stuff's great. Uh, Nurgle is mostly good. Mostly good. There's a lot of really great stuff. Uh, there's obviously those exceptions. Scrivener, Bile Piper, Rodigus, Slimax... Are definitely the beast of Nurgle. All uh, unappealing to me personally. Uh, with Skaven, yep, yeah, the range is pretty damn good. I do think they need to add something to it though. Something new has to be done with it. I'm not sure what, couldn't put my finger on it. Maybe Rat Swarms, something like that could be reworked. Mm, some more war engines, something. Something is lacking here. Uh, they used to have some cool, I think they were like the Brood Horror over at Forge World. They had some cool units there once. The Forge World had their own, uh, let's see what we've still got in Skaven, actually. I'll get rid of the Chaos. Yeah, they've still got, they've still got the Warp Gnaw Vermin Lord, who's probably my favourite Vermin Lord. So there's that. Look at him, he's a cool chap. I like the fact that he's got Warp Stone embedded in one side of his body. Much better than embedding skulls in one side of the body. Uh, and it's how it's all fucked up that side too as a consequence. Like, yeah, that's cool. That works. Uh, and of course, Slaves to Darkness in a pretty damn good spot, actually. So, I mean, I hate the chariots. Yeah, Spawn need a rework, but... Yeah, the rest of the range is pretty good. Maybe an update on the Marauders, but I, honestly, the Marauders are at the point where I could foresee them going out of stock forever at this point, just being replaced by some of these uh, different Warcry Cabals. That could happen. Um, I'd prefer if it didn't, but a definite update from Marauders would not hurt. But yeah, there we go. Uh, it took us nearly an hour to get through. Uh, I know people have said, why don't you break it up into small episodes? I could, but honestly, if you want a really in-depth review of these ranges, go over to Kirioth TV. He's gone through and spoken about all these ranges in depth. He's also broken down like all the Forge World stuff, so he'll do a video and it's like all of... Um, Warhammer 40,000 Orcs, and it's just a whole episode for like an hour where he goes through the Orc range, model by model, through Games Workshop and through Forge World. If you want the in-depth breakdowns, go there. I'm just giving a general opinion of where we're at for Age of Sigma, and where I think the factions clash. And honestly, Chaos as a faction, apart from Beastmen, is pretty much perfect. You couldn't ask for it to be much better than it is. Uh, but after we finish with Chaos, we're going to be going on to Death and then Destruction. Destruction is not in a good place. Um, there's been some improvements, but overall they're not in a good place. And Death is a real mishmash. But that's for another episode. 
Until then, I'm back with the Outer Circle. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.